Come on, come on. Let's go, Luminar. You can do this. There it is. One more. Come on. Oh. Oh my gosh. Holy. Welcome back to the class, everyone. It is officially B1 hunting season with the Naboo raid in full swing. And what I want to do in today's video and probably several other videos to come is start to dissect some of the better teams for the raid. And while today's team that we're going to look at might not be the best, it might actually be the cheapest. <laughs> And that is the current Luminara Kit Fisto team that we see before us. I'm officially dubbing this the Lightspeed Bundle Plus team because, as you can see, four of the five characters being used here were actually available in the Lightspeed Bundle that was just out about a week ago, where for $20 you could get Luminara, Plo Koon, Kit Fisto, Qui Gon Jinn all at relic five you will notice that we have replaced the useless eth koth with grandmaster yoda as i feel he's fairly accessible for most people maybe not all the way up at relic eight as was needed for jmk but in general most people have him because he only required five jedi to begin with now this whole team is going to be utilizing a lot of the new mechanics coming with the raid mostly surrounding around the fact that luminar is a healer leader going to be using healing over time in conjunction with kit fistos potency up this is going to generate a ton of counterattacks and true damage to boot now to get this team to get max scores we are going to need to focus on two things the first one is offense modding a little bit more on that in a second and the other thing is a particular strategy that revolves around keeping potency up as much as possible now we will get to the actual footage and how to do this and what you need to look out for but before we jump into that i do want to take a look at the modding and like i said just a few seconds ago offense is going to be key the only two characters that don't really want a ton of offense on the team are going to be luminar and plo Koon. luminar's modding actually is not all that important i ran this current junk that you can see on her right now and it worked just fine every single time there were some other issues in some of the runs but it never revolved around luminar dying you can see here she has a defense primary which are pretty bad value she has a mix of protection and health and speed not really a lot of consistency there aren't really any stat goals as long as you can get it to the point where she's not dying she's pretty much doing her entire job as most of her kit is there to do what it does and not because she's surviving or doing a lot of offense now Plo Koon again another character that doesn't really want to focus as much on offense now I realize it might seem a little bit weird but I did not remod Plo at all for this raid he was actually specifically with the speed set before because I like to use him with star killer and the faster he is the more he gets to keep his damage immunity as well as taunt because if he goes before star killer he gets it more because star killer uses special after anyways basically the only really thing we care about at plo is we want him somewhat fast and the reason for that is his special and his basics are actually pretty important his basic is going to be able to dispel buffs you could probably replace him with shock in some circumstances because she does essentially the same thing but take charge giving 50 percent turn meter to his other allies actually is beneficial because it'll help prolong those buffs we talked about and it can maybe get us faster to our turns where we can get activate those healing over times now the last three characters kit fisto grandmaster yoda and qui-gon are going to want pretty much identical modding in the sense that you want as much offense as possible. We are going to be dealing true damage, which if you remember, means we're going to be removing defense and crit damage as a factor. So as much raw offense as possible is what we want. We don't care that much about crit chance. We don't care that much about crit damage. We just want pure offense. So on Kid Pisto, we have an offense set with three offensive primaries. And then we try to get some offensive secondaries on the other mods. I don't really have a specific goal in mind as high as possible is best. Ours is currently sitting for physical offense at 8,697. So do with that what you will. Well, Grandmaster Yoda, exact same setup. Offense, 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 offense set, offense secondaries, as much offense as you can get. His special damage is currently at 13,000 or so. Qui Gon Jin, same exact thing. Offense, 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 more offense, still offense. He only clocked at about 7,000 just because his base stats are quite a bit lower. So once we get that overall offense modding down, there really is only one other thing we need to do to be able to max out scores for this team. Now, I say max scores lightly because I'm only planning on taking this team to R5 because to me that's where most of the value is and I'll be taking up other teams that might have more longevity in other areas to higher relic levels but with that all being said let's go ahead and check out our footage the footage being shown now i have the same exact mods i did this like a half hour ago 
And I'm gonna pause just a, just a little bit because one really big repeating theme that we wanna make sure we do is you can see the middle battle droid here. It's not always the middle, but he is the commando battle droid. And what he will do when it is off cooldown, he will use his special. The reason why that's important is because his special removes buffs. If you if he removes potency up from your team right after you used with Kit Fisto, your run is essentially screwed. And you're gonna have to repeat this at the start of every wave, trying to time it, making sure that he uses special, then having Kit Fisto use potency up and going from there. You'll see at the very beginning of this battle, he's actually gonna move before Kit Fisto, so we don't have to force ourselves into using a basic. He's already gone, he's already removed buff, so now we can go in and use Kit Fisto's potency up on top of that, now giving us that potency up and healing over time combo to the point where, as you can see, Every single time they're doing an AOE and everyone's counterattacking and they're suffering really, really large amounts of damage when it comes to true damage. Now we are going to repeat this process over again in the following round, making sure that we don't activate the potency up before he has already wasted or used up his clear. Now you'll notice here some of the times we have to buy time and there are a few things to know. I guess other, oh my gosh, that is so much damage. They just completely annihilate the other team. Um... So, okay, now on to the ship portion of this. The way that we want to do this is we want to use the worst abilities to best for this faction because as this progresses, it's going to get harder and harder as we go. So the middle ability we want to start with on the first round because quite frankly, it just doesn't do that much for the team. Overall, debuffs don't really add in all that much strategy and really what we want is either the massive damage from the first ability or more importantly, the locked potency up from the final ability. So this being the first time around us just getting started into things, we're gonna go for the middle ability slash debuffs. It doesn't really do all that much. With Qui-Gon Jinn, it's important to note that you typically want to be using the call to assist when your other allies have potency up so that they can also deal more true damage and maybe just going for a basic when nobody else has it. You'll see here that we've lined up our the beginning of the next wave with potency up with Kit Fisto so that we can come in and just do a ton of damage here. Uh, one thing to note is you actually have a ton of dispels on this team between Qui-Gon, Jin special, Luminara specials, that's specific to the raid, so remember that, as well as Plo Koon's basic. You can just, again, I mean, you guys are seeing this all happen. Every single time we're counter, we're just coming in and destroying 10 units at a time. It's absolutely nuts. So again, where this will go wrong, and maybe I should have shown some footage to kind of explain it further, but where this will go wrong, actually what just happened there, when the commando droid specifically was able to get rid of my potency up, and you'll notice our damage between that and the current time that we have it now goes down significantly. Another pointer is that we really shouldn't be using Luminara's special outside of when people aren't in the yellow or red. It really should be viewed as, as a heal. If you have a leadership Zeta, which you really should for this battle, you should be getting enough sufficient healing over time that you won't need that. Now, again, we are going into the second time, so we want to be using the first ability that will give us massive damage. Ultimately, the best ability to use here in the later stages is going to be the potency up for very obvious reasons that you all probably can see right now. So you'll notice that we're just, you know, making our way through this very quickly. I guess here's another good example of we don't have a lot of potency up right now. So we're not doing as much true damage, except for I guess Yoda had. Oh, one of the one of the main reasons why Yoda's here. Number one, buffs generate defense pen in the raid, so that's very important. But the other thing in addition to that is while Kit can only get the potency up to go around for three rounds, if you time it right with Grandmaster Yoda to specifically spread the buffs after or towards the end of when people are going to lose it, he can actually prolong it for two turns longer, making this combo just really stinking nice between the two of them because Kid Fisto will spread it to everyone for three turns. You get to the end of that, Grandmaster Yoda can spread it for two more, and you could almost create a cycle again if we can avoid the Commander Droid in the middle constantly stripping off buffs, and then we're pretty much just fine. So as you can see, the match is pretty much continuing exactly as expected from what we were doing before. Um, I will note, as far as kill order goes, it's typically better to start with Droidica or stop first. It doesn't matter all that much, um, as you can see, because most of the time what ends up happening is everyone ends up dying to AoEs like that one. My goodness. So I, I you can probably all tell why I like this comp quite a lot. On top of the fact that I've wanted, I've wanted Luminara. I guess Kit Fisto too, but I've wanted Luminara to be good for a really long time. This is... Oh, this just warms my heart. So obviously now we only have one choice being the best one, which is potency up. Fun fact, we didn't actually need it here. We already had it coming into this. So that was kind of nice. One other thing that's kind of a fun fact for you to know. If Grandmaster Yoda has the locked potency, when he goes to spread it, he will actually spread 
unlock potency, which is good. It's uh, it's better than him not spreading anything at all. And then I, I blinked and the team disappeared, and here we are. You'll notice that we're almost to the end of the Relic 5 tier for this overall box, and we're only at about 59% Enrage, and I, you guys know how this goes. It, 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 go, it goes very, very well. So I guess I'll say the times that this won't work that I've been trying is not having enough offense on my three Jedi that I showed before. If you get someone into the red and just can't kill the whole team off and they end up coming back and healing, it can be quite devastating. But as long as you have offense and they die, it, it goes really it goes really stinking well. So overall, that is going to be the comp. Again, remember those two things really well. Number one, have a lot of good offense modding on your characters in conjunction with that try to time the potency up as best you can so that the commander droid isn't going to be able to dispel it off of you utilize yoda to be able to prolong that for a few more turns if you can make sure that you're holding certain dispels for the droid because if you have to get past them one of the annoying things that can happen is when all your characters keep coming in to do their true damage but at the same time the droid have damage immunity, so it doesn't really get through to them so that is going to be this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments and how it works for you. And what other teams would you like to see us try out at lower Relic levels? I know there's a lot of footage right now going out of people who have Relic 7 or Relic 8 characters. And I realize that's that's great and all, but I'm a Relic 5 kind of guy. So uh, hit your brother up. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, stay awesome.